Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Before you can issue a paycheck to an employee, you must have the employee entered into Sage 50. We looked at the process of setting up payroll and entering the employee defaults back in Chapter 2. Now we will look at creating the individual employee records. To do this, select Maintain and then Employees and Sales Reps from the menu bar. This invokes the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window where you can add new employees and edit employee information. At the top of the window, you enter the ID that you want to assign to the employee into the Employee ID field. Next, type the first name, middle initial, last name, suffix, and nickname of the employee into the five corresponding fields to the right of the name label. Then select an option button to indicate the employee's status, employee, sales rep, or both. If you select employee, the individual will appear on employee-related reports and the payroll entry window. If you select Sales Rep, they will appear in the Sales Rep drop-down menu and on Accounts Receivable Sales Rep reports. Paychecks cannot be issued to these individuals. Both allows for both aspects at once. To make an employee record inactive after it has been created, you can check the Inactive checkbox. Then click the General tab to view the basic employee information. Enter the address of the employee into the address fields. Then enter the city, state, and zip into the three fields to the right of the label with the same name. Enter the country of the employee into the country field. Below the address information, enter the primary email address of the employee into the email field and the secondary email address of the employee into the Email To field. At the top of the next column of fields, enter the employee's home phone, work phone, and mobile phone numbers into the three fields of the same name. If the employee has received a raise, you can enter the date of the most recent raise into the last raise field. Then enter the Social Security number of the employee into the Social Security number field. You can assign the employee an employee type within the Type field by entering whatever code you want to use for that purpose into the box provided. The values that you enter into this field can later be used as a report filter or as a way of selecting a group of employees for whom you wish to process payroll. You can add a photo of an employee if desired by clicking the Add Photo hyperlink shown in the area to the right. Sage 50 will then open an open dialog box where you can browse to and select the picture of the employee to use. Then click the open button within the dialog box after selecting the desired photo to add it into the employee record. Below the photo field, you can click the employee beginning balances button to open the employee beginning balances window where you can enter employee beginning balances as of the start date of your company file. Entering these values allows you to produce accurate information within your payroll and W-2 reporting. After entering these values, click the Save button to save them, and then close the Employee Beginning Balances window. We will examine entering Employee Beginning Balances in more detail in the lesson titled Adding Employee Beginning Balances later on within this chapter. At the bottom of this tab, in the Customizable Fields section, you can enter the information into the fields available. Note that these are the fields that you created within the Employee Defaults window. Next, continue to enter additional employee data by clicking the Additional Info tab. In the Emergency Contact section, enter emergency contact information for the employee. You can input the name of the emergency contact into the Name field. Then enter their relationship to the employee into the Relationship field. You can then enter the emergency contact's primary phone number into the Phone 1 field and their secondary phone number into the Phone 2 field. In the Demographic Information section, you can enter additional demographic information about the employee. Enter the employee's birth date into the Birth Date field. Then select their marital status from the Marital Status drop-down. 
you can select a gender from the gender drop-down and an ethnic origin from the ethnic origin drop-down. In the employment details section, enter the employee's position into the job title field. If you use job codes, you can enter the employee's job code into the job code field. If your company has different divisions, you can enter the division that this employee works for into the division field. If you have different physical locations within your company, you can enter the location of the employee into the location field. You can enter the department within the company where the employee works into the department field. If the employee has a supervisor, you can select the name of this employee's supervisor from the supervisor drop-down menu. This list contains the names of all employees and sales reps that have been entered through the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window. You can click the email button next to the supervisor drop-down to send an email to the employee's supervisor assuming that you entered an email address for the supervisor into the email field on the general tab when you created the selected supervisor's employee record within the maintain employees and sales reps window. In the next column of fields you can select the employee's employment status from the employment status drop down. Note that these choices are the ones that you created within the employee defaults window on the employment status tab. You can click the customize status hyperlink to the right of the drop-down menu to quickly open this window and display the tab to change the statuses if needed. Then enter the date that the employee was hired from the Hired Calendar drop-down menu. If the employee is terminated in the future, you can enter the date of their termination into the Terminated field. If you rehire a terminated employee, you can enter the date of their rehire into the Rehired field. You can enter the employee's I-9 verification status into the I-9 verification status field. After the employee is verified, you can enter the date of the verification into the I-9 verification date field. Next, click the Pay Info tab to enter information about how you pay the employee. Select an option from the Pay Method drop-down, Salary, hourly hours per pay period, or hourly time ticket hours. If needed, you can enter an hourly dollar amount to bill customers for time recorded on time tickets into the Rate Used to Bill Customer field. If you selected the hourly hours per pay period choice from the Pay Method drop-down, then select the frequency with which you pay this employee from the Pay Frequency drop-down and after that enter the usual number of hours the employee works in the selected pay period into the hours per pay period field. Next you will set the different pay levels available for this particular employee. Enter all of the different types of pay and their associated amounts that the employee can earn into the pay type list shown under either the hourly pay rate or salary pay rate column that appears. Note that for salaried employees, you enter the amount of pay for each rate for the pay period that was selected above. You can check the Use Defaults checkbox to clear the checkbox from the box if you do not want to use the standard General Ledger Payroll Expense Account for the selected employee's pay type. If you do that, you would then have to select a different General Ledger account from the adjacent account field. After entering the types of pay and indicating the pay rates, you can check either of the two checkboxes at the bottom of this tab for eligible for health insurance and receives W-2 electronically if they apply to this employee. Next, click the Withholding Information tab to enter the employee's withholding information. Use the list to enter the basic payroll withholding information for the employee. Select the appropriate status of the employee using the drop-downs within the Filing Status column for each of the payroll field names that are shown. Enter the number of allowances for this employee into the Allowance column for the Federal, State, and Local rows. 
You can also enter any additional withholding amounts if employees elect to have additional money withheld from their paychecks under the Additional Withholding column. Some state tax formulas use the allowances and additional withholding fields for tax calculation purposes. Also enter the two-letter abbreviation for the employee state into the state and locality column for the state row and, if needed, the locality row. At the bottom of the tab, under the W-2 checkboxes section, you can also check the employee has retirement plan such as a simple IRA, 401k or 403b, etc. checkbox if the employee participates in a 401k or other retirement plan. Check the checkbox for statutory employee if the employee qualifies as a statutory employee according to the current IRS guidelines. Doing this will place a check into the associated checkboxes in the employee's W-2 form. You can enter the employee's vacation and sick time by clicking the vacation and sick time tab. Here you can change the specifics of this employee's vacation and sick time tracking if they differ from the settings created within the employee defaults window. If you wish to change the values for this employee, then first uncheck either or both checkboxes for this employee uses the company default settings for a vacation and this employee uses the company default settings for sick time that appear in the vacation time settings section and the sick time settings section. You can then enter the employee's specific vacation and sick time settings into the areas below the checkboxes as needed. Click the Employee Fields tab to enter deductions specific to the employee if needed. For non-calculated payroll deductions, you may have an employee whose payroll deduction amounts differ from the company-wide ones that you created within the employee defaults window. You can enter specific employee deductions on this tab. To do this, uncheck the Use Defaults field for the desired deduction if you do not want to use the standard payroll field information for this employee as defined by the values within the employee defaults window. You can then change the account used to track the tax liability or the amount to be deducted from the employee's paycheck by changing the values within the account and amount columns as needed. You can click the Company Fields tab to change the default employer paid payroll taxes if needed. It is most unlikely that you will need to make changes on this tab, as you would only need to do so if the settings need to be different from the values found within the Employee Defaults window. The values shown are established by the taxes and benefits you entered during the payroll settings when you initially created the payroll for your company file. Once you have entered all of the necessary employee information, Click the Save button within the toolbar at the top of the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window to save your changes and leave the record displayed within the window. Alternately, you can click the Save a New button within the toolbar to save the employee record and then create a new blank employee record if you need to continue entering employee data. When you are finished using this window, you can click the Close button to close it. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.